Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a DynamoDB Global Secondary Index. I'm also going to explain to you some of the important settings along the way, including projections. And then finally I'm going to show you how to query on the GSI that you just created. So I'm here in the DynamoDB console and I have a orders table here. And I just took the liberty of pre-filling this uh, table with some data. So we have just order IDs with certain customer IDs. So we have three different unique customers here, customer 100, 101, and 102. We have a variety of different order dates. We have a state and we have a total amount that the order is worth. Now in our current setup, if we just take uh, the normal partition key of the order ID, we're only gonna be able to query on this order ID field. So for example, if I go to the scan section or scan query, and I go to the query over here, you can see here that the only thing that I can select, the table or index, is, well, table is grayed out, but orders is the only index that I can query on. And the reason is, is because that's our partition key right now and we don't have any GSIs. So as a result, you can only query for order IDs, as you can see here. So our goal is to make it so that we can also search for customer IDs. So we wanna set up a global secondary index on customer ID so that we can search for any given one customer and get all of their orders. If you recall, customer 100 had uh, two orders here. So that's what we're trying to do. So in order to do that, we need to create a global secondary index and it's called the GSI and it's a quick way for us to query on other fields that are not our partition key, which is what you originally select when you create your DynamoDB table. So we're going to set one up on customer ID. You can also set one up on state or even order date and I guess technically even total amount if you want. But you can have uh, quite a few GSIs on your table. I believe the, the limit is either 10 or higher. Um, someone in the comments can correct me there. But let's go ahead now and create that GSI for customer ID for this table. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go back to the DynamoDB section here. Uh, actually, let's do it this way. So we're going to go to tables on the side. Going to select my orders table again and just take that out of the way. We're going to go to indexes here. And if you don't have any indexes or GSIs, this is where they'll show up. And if you notice here, there's a bunch of different... Um, columns here that are going to show us some settings on it later. We'll get into that a little bit after. Uh, for now, let's just click on create index. And now you need to give it your partition key that you want to use for this index. So for us, it's going to be customer ID. Now in this case, we also do want to add a sort key. And the reason is, is because we can have a customer ID with many, many different orders. And so maybe we wanna do a query such as, you know, give me all the rows with customer ID 100, but within a particular date range. So if what we do here is if we set our order dates to be our sort key, we're gonna be able to answer that second part of the question within a particular date range. If we just use customer ID, we're gonna be able to get all the orders for a customer ID, but this is gonna give us that extra power of uh, filtering by certain date ranges. So that's a neat little tip that you can apply to your tables. Um, okay, so the other thing that we need to do is you need to set your index capacity. Now, if you already have your table set as on demand, this is gonna be, uh, it's gonna inherit that value effectively. Um, and if you wanna use provisioned, then your normal table needs to be in provisioned as well. The reason that is, is because if these two settings get out of sync, it can cause your GSI table to fall behind your main table and eventually cause some throttles on your main table's write operations. That's a more complicated thing, but basically for all intensive purposes, you need to have the same setting here. Um, and if you wanna know more about like how GSIs work, I have another video where I go into this stuff in depth. So I'll leave that um, maybe at the end of this video and in the description or comment section. All right, so I want to talk now about attribute projections because this is a pretty neat and powerful feature that not enough people know about. Uh, so what attribute projections allow you to do, if you recall on our table, we had a bunch of different columns. We had order ID, customer ID, order date, state, and total amount. Maybe I'll put a screenshot or something up here so you can follow along. Now in our particular case, we're setting a GSI on customer ID. But when you query on customer ID, you don't need all the fields. You don't need the order ID, the order date, state, uh, total amount. Maybe you only need one or two of them, but you don't need all of them. That's what projections effectively allow you to do. They allow you to limit the result set that you get back when you query on this GSI. So instead of getting all your columns, you only get the ones either you specify or you'll get all of them or you'll get only the keys. And that's what this is kind of telling you here. 
So if you leave all as a option, that means that your GSI table is gonna have the same attributes or columns of your main table. If you set this as only keys, then it's just gonna store the keys of the records. And this one is include. So if you only want a particular subset, so maybe you only want uh, order ID in addition to order dates, then you can put those two fields in the include section. You can add two attributes here for each of them, and then the index will only have that information. Now, the reason why this is useful too, like limiting your result set here and not always using all, is because as you may or may not know, DynamoDB, you're charged on read and write capacity units. The bigger your items are that you store on your table and your GSI included, the more that you get charged. So it's in your interest to limit this if you need to. Keep in mind, I don't think that you can change this after you create it. So it's kind of like a one, uh, one way door in a way. You'd have to create a new index if you want to add stuff to it after the fact. All right, so I've lathered on. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as all and we're going to go ahead and click on create index now. Now you can see here that it says it is currently in the creating state. I've seen this take up to like up to an hour on a really large table before, but they advertise uh, generally around five minutes. So I'm just gonna let this go and fast forward until it's done. All right, so our index has finally been created. One thing I realized I forgot to add is the name of the index. By default, it will select the field that is the partition key and the sort key if you have one, followed by the dash index name. Now you can name this whatever you want, but just know that if you wanna use this in code, so if you wanna query off of the customer ID, then you do need to provide the index or else Dynamo is gonna throw an exception at you. Uh, there's also some other settings that you may wanna see here, other things just like the projected attributes, uh, the size, and the item count are particularly useful ones just to peek at once in a while. So in order to use our index, we want to go back to explore table items. And now uh, if we go to the query section, you can see now that we also have access to our other index here. So we can select this index. And now if we look at our data really quick, uh, say we want all orders with this customer ID. So we should get these two back. We can select that here, just put that in and we're gonna click run. You can see we get the two items back here. Now say we wanna take advantage of the sort key. Uh, so you see we have uh, date fields here. These are lexicographically sorted when you use the uh, sort key value. So what you can do is you can say, give me all the orders that are greater than or equal to March 2nd here. So if you click on run now, you're only gonna get that first one back. If you put the third here, it shouldn't give you anything back. And if you change this to like January, it should give them both back. That's just a quick demonstration. So if you wanna clean up the index, you could just go back to the uh, same section over here in tables, orders, and then go to indexes, and then click on this guy and go ahead and click on delete. So that's it for creating GSI. I hope this was useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below.